Hi, I'm Peterson Goodwin from DIY Recording Equipment and welcome to another episode of From the Bench. Today I'm going to talk about uh, a feature that is part of uh, one of our kits but's going to be continued into other kits in the future and that is the vintage output option. Uh, we started that with our EQP5 kit which is our classic Pultec style equalizer for the 500 series and when we were designing this a couple years ago we couldn't choose between two different uh, topologies for this signal path meaning uh, all the circuitry that the audio has to flow through and uh, as I'm as I'm sure you're well aware as a fan of analog audio equipment every single component every piece of circuitry in a piece of gear has an effect on the sound so our choice for the signal path it was really a choice of the sound of the unit. Um, and so the two we couldn't choose between were, um, one is very modern, uh, ended up being called the modern output. Um, it's based on little integrated circuits like this. In our case, they are uh, the NE5532s, which have actually been around for quite a while. They're not all that modern, um, but they're very clean, they're very detailed, um, they're very transparent. So with that kind of circuit topology, what you would have is a wonderfully broad, transparent equalizer that you could use on any source without leaving any kind of sonic fingerprint. Um, and the other topology, which we have here, is uh, vintage. We called it the vintage output. It's more colored. It's got a tiny bit of distortion, a tiny bit of compression. Um, it very much leaves its fingerprints all over the sound. And that can be a beautiful thing, uh, but if you are recording, say, a string quartet, maybe that's not what you want. You want the most transparency. So we decided to include both in the kit. It turned out we had space on the circuit board for both. We put in a little um, header here so you can choose between the vintage or the modern output. Uh, without doing any soldering and um, the unit works fine with just the modern output. So I'm going to go back to that here. This is the EQP5 with just the modern output and you'll notice all of this up here uh, these slots are empty on the circuit board um, and so this this just works perfectly fine uh, it's it's a wonderful very transparent equalizer um, but we added, so here's one with the vintage output, and basically today I'm just going to go through what's in the vintage output, what it's doing, and uh, why you would want to add that to a piece of gear. So the vintage output starts with this comp uh, condenser, That's, I can only think of the, the British term, this capacitor, um, which is in the signal path, so all the audio flows through it, and as you can see, um, this is a pretty big, kind of old looking, because it is old, capacitor. And this is a tantalum capacitor. Tantalum is a material that's not used all that much for audio capacitors anymore. Uh, but at one time it was the standard, it's in all the old Neve stuff, um, old Poltec stuff. And the reason it's not used anymore is it's not very transparent. It has uh, a good amount of distortion. And that's because of this, uh, it has this parasitic, or rather this, um, this feature, this unintended consequence of the composition of this capacitor is something called dielectric absorption. Uh, and this basically describes the capacitor's memory or its resistance to changing states from uh, being polarized one way to being polarized the other. And this effect becomes more pronounced as frequency goes up. So it's a very subtle effect. But what it does is it, it does a tiny amount of compression, uh, meaning it doesn't pass all of the energy that comes into it. 100% comes in, maybe 97, 95% comes out. But again, relative to frequency, so it's not like a compressor compressing the entire waveform. Um, and there's also some, uh, some distortion. So what this capacitor does in audio terms is it, um, it rounds out some of the very fine details, some of the very high frequencies, um, and it, it makes everything feel a bit more like a one solid whole, 
rather than um, something that's very detailed, very multifaceted. Um, it's hard to describe, but the effect subjectively is, is something like, oh, that sounds a bit more vintage, a bit more um, like, a, like a vintage record. Um, it's so hard to describe these things. Um, next up is the discrete op amp. So here we have sockets for a 2520 style discrete op amp. You may have heard of the 2520. It is the, the most famous DOA or discrete op amp from API. They still use it today. It's the heart of the API sound. Um, API designed it. It's, it's what's responsible for a lot of that that punchiness, that larger-than-life sound that makes APIs so sought after. And it's a standard footprint. So we um, included sockets for that. You can put in any op amp. We recommend a 2520 style one, like this Rogue 5 from Louder Than Liftoff. Um, but you can put anything in there. You can put in a uh, an older style one, like the 1731, for a little more color or a uh, Tom Hardy Jensen uh, newer design for a little less color, a little more headroom. Um, it, it's all up to you. That's, that's kind of the beauty of this. And finally we get to this huge, uh, heavy, expensive thing, which is the transformer. Um, transformers have a ferrous core, which is why uh, they are often described as having the sound of iron. Adding the sound of iron to a, a piece of gear is is usually thought of as a very, um, it, well, it's a very vintage sound. There is transformers just like um, tape machines, just like analog tape. Uh, they can saturate. The core can only hold so much magnetic flux. So once you start to, to fill up the core with flux, it compresses, it, it, um, it distorts um, in ways that are harmonically related to the, to the music, much like analog tape. So Transformers are, are much, much beloved in analog audio circuits, and so of course we had to include one here in our vintage output. This transformer is modeled after the API 2503, which would have been paired in their vintage preamps with the 2520 discrete op amps. I know that's a lot of numbers, but the idea is, well, if we're going to have an API style, um, discrete op amp, we should pair it with an API style transformer, uh, which also happens to be exactly what uh, Poltec did with their solid state EQs, but that's, uh, that's a bit of a different story. So this vintage output, I would describe the sound of it overall as it's very subtle. Um, it can be easy when we're talking about distortion or compression or everything I've just been saying to imagine that it's something very aggressive, um, but usually, and this is this is definitely the case here, when we're talking about just a few analog components like this, this the the sound it imparts is subtle. We're talking just very small amounts of compression or harmonic distortion or phase distortion, to the extent that when when you engage the vintage output, you don't you never think, oh wow, that that sounds so distorted. You you might not notice it. Um, you might notice it only after recording a few tracks through it. And when you do notice it, it's more like, oh, that sounds kind of ineffably more like a record or more finished, or um, this sounds more like a completed um, sound that I can fit into the mix more easily than something that uh, was recorded with a very transparent device. Um, it's a little bit more compressed, so it doesn't need as much gain to be as um, to have as visceral a feel in the mix. The harmonic distortion might make it feel more alive or more punchy. Um, so we're talking about very subtle differences, but it, recording is all about very subtle differences. So that is uh, just a quick overview of the vintage output. Um, we love it. People love it, so we're including it as an option in our upcoming compressor kit as well. That's the OLA-5, which is, um, is on pre-order this month. It's, it's March 2018, uh, but it should be available uh, over the summer. So since this is something that's going to be featuring uh, more in our lineup, I thought 
this would be a good chance to tell you more about it and uh, maybe clear up some questions. So I hope you enjoyed this and uh, thank you for watching.